Happy Thanksgiving! For Christians, Thanksgiving is offered first and foremost to God, as part of our National Day of Feasting and Family. Welcome to worship, to give thanks to God for endless and continuous blessings. A blessing for Thanksgiving. For many of us, Thanksgiving and Christmas offer a break from the rapid pace of everyday life, a sense of love and joy, and the opportunity to reconnect with family and friends. And for many of us, November and December bring a sense of loss, painful memories and grief for what was or what might have been or what was not. Holidays can provide us with a stressful combination of all of these emotions. During the bittersweet sweet moments, there is an author whose name is Jan Richardson. She is an artist, a poet, an ordained minister in the United Methodist Church, and a person of incredible depth. Whatever you are today, may this blessing by her find you a moment of peace, blessing in the chaos. To all that is chaotic in you, let there come silence. Let there be a calming of the clamoring, a stillness of the voices that have laid their claim on you, that have made their home in you, that go with you even to the holy places, but will not let you rest, will not let you hear your life with a wholeness or feel the grace that is fashioned by you. Let what, let what distracts you cease. Let that what divides you cease. Let there come in to an end to what dis- diminishes and what demeans, and let depart all that keeps you in its cage. Let there be an opening into the quiet that lies beneath the chaos, where you will find the peace that you did not think was possible, and see what shimmers within the storm. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus that bears our cross, the spirit of one who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God and humanity, confess our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice by overwhelmed by the fear of violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown. Forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we have turned away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right pathway. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice strength stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making new ways for us. And in Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this evening comes from Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving to you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruits of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at the time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give to us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and the signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring to the first fruits of the ground to you, O Lord, you have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then... You, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading tonight comes from Psalm 100. 
Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the Lord's gates with thanksgiving and the Lord's courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. Our second reading tonight comes from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. Praising God with a loud voice, he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So in our culture today, gratitude is a often cited practice that you should have. Everywhere you go, when you look at how to deal with stress, how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with discomfort of just about any kind, you'll hear somebody talk about gratitude. It all starts with gratitude. That's a major focus sometimes of the sort of self-help genre within our culture today. Of course, our story today revolves around gratitude. And of course, Thanksgiving is the day where we give thanks. We remember what we're thankful for, which is a good practice. You certainly won't ever hear me say we shouldn't practice gratitude. But I think that we find maybe sometimes that we can get wrapped up in thinking of gratitude as a discipline, which it is, but one that we have to make perfect. Always have to be grateful no matter what the circumstance. Always have to be grateful no matter what the cause. Even when we don't feel grateful, sometimes we think we have to be grateful. Have to find that silver lining, we might say. In our story today, it seems like we have one person who's grateful and nine who are not. But that isn't exactly what our text tells us. It says only that only one returned to give thanks to Jesus. 
to, she, to show that he knew who Jesus was, to show that his faith was also connected to Jesus. And as he did that, Jesus gives him that common phrase, your faith has made you well. I always imagine when when those who heard that phrase, no matter if they were the Samaritan in our story or all of the various people that Jesus interacts with, it must have been such a jump for for their faith. It must have been such a boom for how they felt about their relation to God. I imagine he picked himself up after being hearing Jesus saying that, then went on his way, head held up high. Not prideful, but grateful which is one of the interesting things about being grateful. It can look a little bit like pride, maybe in how it expresses itself. But you also notice that the other nine who did not come back are not suddenly unhealed. They're still healed. They were all made clean. And none of them, none of that cleanliness was taken away from them just because they didn't come back. You see, so what the difference is between these two is in the disposition. It is in how they think about themselves. Not so much in the gift that has been given. None of them earned this gift. But in how they relate to it, that is what has changed. So as we gather around our Thanksgiving tables and with family and friends, and we come to that point where, okay, we've got to remember what we're grateful for. Perhaps we might think of gratitude this season as a gift in and of itself as grace in and of itself, that all good things come from God, including the gratitude to be grateful for them. And in that way, we might then hear that same phrase spoken to us, your faith has made you well. And welling up inside of us might be that same disposition. Where we might hold our head up high and go through the rest of this year and into next year with that disposition of gratitude. That disposition that God is the one who holds all things. God is the one who holds us. May the Spirit of God give you reason to be grateful this season. And may God's Spirit remind you that it is God who holds you. God bless you, and happy Thanksgiving. Amen.
Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us turn our hearts to God, our breath, and our life, as we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. Generous God, we thank you for the legacy and gift of the Church. Make our proclamation clear, our generosity bold, and our community rich and welcome. We raise grateful hearts for the body of Christ where we find belonging. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator of the earth, the bounty of creation reveals your abundant love. Provide safety and shelter for all wildlife. Save us from the waste of natural resources. We raise grateful hearts for the earth, our home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all nations, make all tribes and lands places where justice and inclusion is realized and celebrated. Protect any who are vulnerable and feed all who hunger. We raise grateful hearts for civil rights and just leaders. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you see us and are moved with compassion. Attend to those who are sick or dying. Surround with love all who are lonely and despairing. And comfort those in need. We raise grateful hearts for your loving kindness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the welcome table, you gather people to be shaped by your word. We pray for ministries that notice and respond to human needs, food banks, shelters, community resource centers. We raise grateful hearts for these organizations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you raise those who have died to new life in Christ. We raise grateful hearts for the lives and faithfulness of all the saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You create a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and you fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and in want. And by this bread and cup, make us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. And now may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.